friends and welcome to this channel. My name is Ashley and I read stories. Today I've decided to start with another nonfiction story that I read when I was a little girl, probably in middle school. Um, my teacher read it to me a long time ago. It's uh, Natalie Babbitt's Tuck Everlasting. And while we're reading, I think it's fun to be thinking about the idea of living forever. Would you decide to live forever if you had the chance? Something that I like to do when I'm reading stories is put myself in the place of the main characters and think about would I be making the same decisions that they are in the book or would I decide something different? Because I think that thinking is very fun and just sitting all by yourself and thinking is something that's a great way to pass the time. So I hope that you enjoy Tuck Everlasting with me. We're going to start with the prologue. The first week of August hangs at the very top of summer, the top of the live long year, like the highest seat of a Ferris wheel when it pauses in its turning. The weeks that come before are only a climb from balmy spring and those that follow a drop to the chill of autumn. But the first week of August is motionless and hot. It is curiously silent too, with blank white dawns and glaring noons and sunsets smeared with too much color. Often at night there is lightning, but it quivers all alone. There is no thunder, no relieving rain. These are strange and breathless days, the dog days, when people are led to do things that they are sure to be sorry for after. One day at that time, not so very long ago, three things happened, and at first, there appeared to be no connection between them. At dawn, May Tuck set out on her horse for the wood at the edge of the village of Tree Gap. She was going there, as she did once every 10 years, to meet her two sons, Miles and Jesse. At noontime, Winnie Foster, whose family owned the Tree Gap wood, lost her patience at last and decided to think about running away. And at sunset, a stranger appeared at the Foster's gate. He was looking for someone, but he didn't say who. No connection, you would agree, but things can come together in strange ways. The wood was at the center, the hub of the wheel. All wheels must have a hub. A Ferris wheel has one, and as the sun is the hub of the wheeling calendar. Fixed points they are, and best left undisturbed for without them, nothing holds together. But sometimes people find this out too late. 